Faith is a conviction of such strength that a person will rest the full weight of his life and future upon the God in whom he trusts. How many of you have ever heard of Charles Blondin? Charles Blondin. Blondin was a acrobat, lived in the 1800s, and he worked with the circus, and one of the things that he did a lot was the tightrope walk type of thing. And the circus went to Niagara Falls at one point, and when Blondin saw the falls, he was just blown away. And he stood there looking over the Niagara Gorge, and he said, this is my destiny. I am going to walk across these falls on a rope. And so he, he set about raising the money and having a rope made to stretch 1,100 feet across the Niagara Gorge above the Raging Rapids. And he began to advertise that he was going to do this, that he was going to walk across uh, this rope. And, and so the day came and people charged, he charged people like a quarter, which probably was a lot of money back then, charged them a quarter to watch him. And everybody came, why? because they wanted to see him fall, essentially, is what it comes down to. Everybody thought he was going to fall. And, and so there are different versions of the story, but I'll tell you the version that I like, because it's just, I like it. Uh, so Blondin's standing on shore, and he looks at the crowd, and, and he says, who believes that I can go across the falls on this rope? And, and everybody's looking at him like, you're an idiot. No, we don't believe that. And, and so he turns around, and he runs out onto the rope. And everybody's like, <gasps> but he doesn't fall. And not only does he not fall, he begins to do all kinds of stunts. And on this day and over the course of several days, he, he would do things like um, do a somersault on the rope. He would hang off the rope. He would uh, took a wheelbarrow the one time across the rope, and he had a little stove in the wheelbarrow. And he cooked an omelet, and he lowered the omelet down to the people that were on the boat, the Maid of the Mist down below, and they ate the omelet, and they said it was a good omelet. And so then he would go over to the, to the other side and, and have a glass of wine or do whatever. He'd come back. Uh, one time he had these big baskets on his feet. Another time he put a sack over his head. Another time he, I think he walked backwards. He, there's a picture of him somewhere with a washing machine on his back. I mean, this guy was insane. And, and so he does all of these feats over a period of I don't know how many days. And, and by now, everybody is just like, you are absolutely amazing. You can do anything. And, and so then Blondin stands before the crowd and he says, who believes that I can carry a person across these falls on my back? And everybody by now is like, yeah, we believe you can do anything. And so then he says, who wants to be the person? Absolute silence. Blondin carried his manager, Harry Colcord, on his back. Blondin weighed 140 pounds. His manager weighed 140 pounds. The beam, the bar that he used to balance himself weighed 45 pounds. And so here he is carrying all this weight, and he gets onto the rope, has the manager climb on his back, and says, whatever you do, don't move. <laughs> Just hold on. And he begins to walk across. And now every so often, there are these guy wires that are on the rope to keep it from swaying, to help make it to be stable. And so he'd, he'd go across, and he got about a third of the way, and, and he had to stop at one of the guy wires and, and kind of put his foot down to get his balance, and he's exhausted. He didn't realize how much weight he was carrying, how difficult it was going to be. And so he's sweating, he's tired, he's not sure that he's going to make it. And he tells the manager, you're going to have to get off my back so I can rest. And so Harry Colcord slides off of his back and they're standing together on this rope while Blondin catches his breath. Then he has him crawl back up on, but Blondin is wearing these kind of, sli uh, not slimy, but uh, shiny tights. And so they're slippery. And so he has a hard time actually getting back on, on, on his back. So they go through this process several times, and uh, finally he's getting close to the middle, and when he begins to get to the middle, there's no guy wires, and so the rope begins to sway. Not only that, there's so much distance and weight with the rope that it's about 50 feet lower than it is at the shore because of the droop. And, and so he gets to this point, and it starts swinging, and he realizes that if I'm going to make this, I'm going to have to run. And so he starts running with a 140-pound guy in his back and this 45-pound beam, and he's running to get to the next guy wire. And he finally gets there with a the rope swaying, and he puts his foot down, and it breaks. Some people thought that somebody sabotaged it because there was a lot of money that was bet. And so he jerks and wildly in order to catch his balance, which he finally does. And then he has to run up to the next guy wire so he can finally catch a, catch a break. So finally, after I don't know how long it took, perspiring, exhausted, soaked with his own sweat, Blondin and his manager finally make it to the other side. They made it across. This is the type of faith that we're talking about when the Bible refers to faith. 
It's a faith of such trust and confidence that, that we believe that God is able to carry the weight of our lives on his shoulders. It's, I, I call it the Harry Colcord faith because he had such a confidence in Blondin. And, and the difference between the two things here is that Blondin was a man. He was imperfect. He was a human. He was somebody of limited ability. He very much could have fallen. But when we talk about resting, resting the weight of our lives, of our futures on the God of the universe, we're talking about a trust in a sovereign God who has never been unfaithful, has never been unable to fulfill his promises in our lives. That's the faith that the Bible speaks of.